So today is the seventh day of our Pentecost Novena, and our topic is on the Holy Spirit, our advocate and strength. And after Mass, our speaker, Mrs. Abna Safa Ofori, will speak to us on the Holy Spirit, our advocate and strength. So we welcome Safwa to our church this afternoon. Father, may they be one in us. May they be one in us. Unity, togetherness. I have here a box of matches. And if I put about 10 matches together, and I try to break them, I won't be able to do it. I won't be able to. They're too strong. One by one, I can break them, but not 10 together or 12 or 14. I cannot do it. United we stand, divided we fall. And that's the message that Christ gives to us today. That if we're united and not divided, not divided. I remember talking once to a Black Star footballer, famous footballer. And I asked him, what was happening, Black Stars? This is years ago. He said, Father, with too many individual players, they're not working as a team. Individuals, individuals. United, we stand. Divided, we fall. And that's what's in the first reading today from the Acts of the Apostles. The Sadducees and the Pharisees were fighting one another. They weren't united. They were all Jews. But they weren't united in their beliefs. The Pharisees believed in the resurrection, but the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection. Certain things the Pharisees believed in and the Sadducees didn't. And they were arguing among themselves. They weren't united. United. And that's what Christ is telling us today. May they all be one. With me and you and you and me, may they be so completely one. One. United we stand. Divided we fall. You take our families. If a family is united with mommy and daddy and children, it would be a happy family. But if there's division, infidelity, anger, and hatred, and all sorts, how can they be one and be united? And there are too many families today who are not united. So we pray for unity in families. Unity in our workplaces, that we're able to work together, be together, work together in every way, talking to one another, greeting one another, forgiving one another. United, we stand, and divided, we fall. Same too in the church. At times you get societies not talking to each other, fighting with one another, jealous of one another, comparing themselves with each other. It's wrong. All there for the same cause and the same purpose. United we stand, divided we fall. Also a unity with God. The one with God, we're not fighting with God. There's not that sin coming in, separating us from God. United we stand, we're united with God. Doing the things God wants us to do, doing his will. We're not going against him. We will be happy. So today, unity. Unity in our own life, unity in our families, unity at work, unity in the church. May we all be one. As the Father and the Son were one, may we also be one with the Father and the Son. Amen. Now we wish to call Safwa to come forward and give us our talk for today on this seventh day of our novena, preparation for the great feast of Pentecost on Sunday. And she will talk on the spirit, our advocate, and our strength in weakness. So Safwa, you're most welcome to come forward and share your thoughts with us.
Reverend Father, brothers and sisters in Christ, good afternoon. Today, we continue with our Pentecost Novena, and today is talk seven. We are focusing on the Holy Spirit, our help in weakness, and our advocate. I'd like to therefore split this afternoon's session into two. We look at the Holy Spirit as our strength, and then we look at him as our advocate. The Holy Spirit is our strength. When Jesus was leaving, that is when he was ascending, he told his disciples, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. The Holy Spirit is therefore not a spirit of timidity, but of courage and power. The Holy Spirit comes upon us with power, power to be his witnesses, power to tell the whole world of God's love. Notice that in the verse, Acts 1 verse 8, just before Jesus told his disciples that the Holy Spirit will come with power, the disciples were asking Jesus whether he was going to restore to them political power. But Jesus told them, don't bother about that. Rather, focus on what I have for you, the power of the Holy Spirit. Why did Jesus promise them power from the Holy Spirit? Because he knew what the Holy Spirit will bring. And to, his, to fulfill his word, brothers and sisters, we all know that in baptism and confirmation, we, we receive the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of power. This power will give us true freedom in Christ. The freedom that is our theme in this year's Pentecost Novena. The question now is, as baptized and confirmed Catholics, are we living in the power of the Holy Spirit? The power of the Holy Spirit comes to give us strength. It comes to strengthen us to live the life that Jesus has called us to live. It comes to give us the strength to love. The strength to love the Lord our God with all our hearts, with all our might, and the strength to love our neighbor as ourselves. Jesus wants us to love one another. He wants us to forgive each other our offenses. In these COVID times, brothers and sisters, I challenge you to live the love of God at home. Let your family around you experience a more gentle you, a patient you, a forgiving you. Let them experience one who will not shout, but one who will understand. Do you find this difficult? You have the power, the power it takes to live this life. So let those around you experience the love of God. And let us know that the love of God is not just a feeling, it is a commitment. So in loving God, we commit ourselves and work at forgiving our neighbors, making time to pray, and also to obey the inspirations of the Holy Spirit. Often the Holy Spirit talks to us, but then we push him aside. We ask now for the grace and the power of the Holy Spirit that we will obey him when he inspires. In loving God, we never give up. And if we do not give up, then it takes power from the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit also comes to give us the strength to be humble. Jesus said, learn from me for I am meek and humble at heart. Humility is a different story, brothers and sisters. Humility is not timidity at all. Humility is being bold to live the truth no matter the consequences. Humility is putting your brother before you even in dire circumstances. It takes power in action to be humble. And I believe it was the strength of humility 
that emboldened the apostles to witness to the point of death. Are you humble? Sometimes when we try to be humble, we are discouraged because the standards of the world makes us think humility is timidity. And sometimes, sadly, we Christians, we chip in humility. But I challenge each one of you, after this mass, before you put off your device, Google the litany of humility. Pray this litany carefully. Then ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen you so that you, in the power of the Holy Spirit, can live a humble life. The humble life will live in truth. When you are humble, you put the needs of others before you. The last line in the litany of humility says, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire that others may be holier than I, provided that I may be as holy as I should, unquote. You see, humility acknowledges that the other may be better than me. It does not hinder me from being my best, and it does not elicit envy or jealousy from me. It is not easy to live like this, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can live this new life. While I focus on these two for sake of time, I believe that the Holy Spirit, as usual, is talking to you in your heart. He is awakening you to the virtues he has been working on in you. So please, listen to him now. Remember that he has given you the gift of fortitude. We looked at the gifts of the Holy Spirit yesterday. He has given you the gift of fortitude. And this gift allows you to live in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us put the Holy Spirit power into action. So that all the people around us will experience the love and the humility of God. Imagine how beautiful that will be. In humility... We also surrender totally to the will of God. And in humility, we can firmly tell our Jesus, your will be done, O Lord, not mine. And we will find our peace. This life may appear difficult, but we can because we have the Holy Spirit. This brings us to the second part that the Holy Spirit is our advocate. He is our helper. He will help us. He will strengthen us in times of weakness, in times when we can't find love, in times when we find it difficult to forgive, in times when we find it difficult to be humble, when we find it difficult to, to, to pray, the Holy Spirit will strengthen us in these weak times and he will be our advocate before God. What does it mean when we say someone is our advocate? The definition of advocate impressed me when I found out. It says, a person who publicly supports or recommends a particular cause or policy. A person who publicly supports or recommends a particular cause or policy. The interesting word for me here is publicly. The Holy Spirit will always defend us. He will publicly and quietly support us. So do not be afraid. Never be afraid of making mistakes and do not become despondent because of your repeated failures. For the Holy Spirit will intercede for you. He will be on your case and all will see and declare, see how much God loves you. So the Holy Spirit, he is our advocate and he's our advocate in every way. But for time, I'll just focus on four points. One, he is our advocate and helps us in our work. Yesterday, we learned that the gifts of the Holy Spirit must be used. Whenever God calls you for an assignment, do your best. Do your best in preparation and don't be afraid. And where you fall short, Trust the Holy Spirit. He will fill in perfectly. 
With confidence in our advocate, let us persevere to work hard to build the kingdom of God. The next point is that the Holy Spirit is our advocate and our helper in prayer. The Bible teaches us to pray without ceasing. Sometimes we do not know what to say in prayer, and so we do not pray. I have often heard people say, I cannot pray, or I have finished my prayer. And then they sit and then just gaze and chat. My brothers and sisters, we are living in times when prayer is very important. And yet Christians are gradually becoming too busy to pray. Let us make more time to pray. And when you do, when you do not know what to pray, still come before God. Come before God and call on the Holy Spirit, our helper. He will groan within you with groanings that cannot be uttered. Romans chapter 8 verse 26. In such times, the Holy Spirit requires that you just sit quietly before the Lord and then he takes over. All you have to do is to surrender every distraction that comes to him and he will add it to the prayer. He will allow, so just come before the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to do the rest. And you will be amazed how long and how much time of prayer you will be able to have in his presence. We are blessed as Catholics to have the blessed sacrament exposed. Wherever and whenever you can, come before the blessed sacrament. Talk to the blessed sacrament. But when you do not have anything to say, still sit before the blessed sacrament and allow the Holy Spirit to groan within you. And as he does, he takes control of every situation in our lives. The Holy Spirit also helps us in our studies, in our studies, in the studies of our children. He is always ready to help us whenever and wherever we call on him. Sometimes we keep him out of this area, but he is calling on us that we should let him in. For when we do, he will surprise us. Let us not be tempted to think that he, he is not interested in that aspect of our life. He is guiding us and he's, let us call on him and let us allow him to help us with our studies. The Holy Spirit finally helps us in every day of our life. The Holy Spirit helps us every day. So let us call upon him at all times. Because when we do, he comes in handy. I read a book once that says that, Ask the Holy Spirit even for the little things like a parking lot at the mall. And you'll be surprised that a car moves out just in time for you. Trust the Holy Spirit. And as Romans chapter 10 verse 11 tells us, he will never put you to shame. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in conclusion, I'd like to end with a note that as we prepare for the Feast of Pentecost, although we have the Holy Spirit, he is still preparing us and guiding us to avail ourselves for a renewal of his presence in our lives. Do not be afraid of this new journey. He is with you and he will be on your case publicly and privately. He will not disappoint you. He will not put you to shame. So open up to the Holy Spirit now. Let him fill you with power. Power that will make all those around you experience his love. Power that will make all those around you experience the humility and the beauty of our God. Let him fill you so that you will never doubt his advocacy for you. And thus, hold on so firmly to him that everyone around you will experience his love. Amen.